It's a tough job building a city. Part of the development includes maintaining strong fiscal policies and controls, working to attract quality businesses and development, all while providing quality of life amenities that include first class education, recreation and leisure opportunities and a small town atmosphere. With 112,300 residents, Pearland continues its path of becoming a cosmopolitan suburban city in the Houston metro area. The Houston Chronicle listed the center at Pearland Parkway as the second largest retail project to break ground in the Houston region in 2014. The 165,000 square foot retail center spans 27 acres at Pearland Parkway and FM 518. It's a tough job building a city. Modern Green Development will build a $300 million IV district on 48 acres on State Highway 288 as their first U.S. project in North America. Ivy District will be an upscale, mixed-use, pedestrian-oriented project with a hotel and conference center and will offer office and retail, restaurants and residential components. It's a tough job building a city. The Pearland Medical Center, an acute care hospital, is a 71,144,000 square foot development on 48 acres. The hospital opened in January 2015 at the intersection of Shadow Creek Boulevard and State Highway 288. This center will join nine other HCA medical centers in the Houston area and employ 250 staff members with a medical staff comprised of more than 200 physicians in a variety of specialties. It's a tough job building a city. Alvin ISD's Shadow Creek High School is under construction in Pearland on 79 acres near the Pearland Town Center with access to the campus from Kirby Drive and Broadway. The school will open in 2016 for Pearland students who are now attending classes at Manville High School. The 500,000 square foot facility will feature learning spaces tailored to meet the evolving needs of 21st century students. It's a tough job building a city. Since 2000, this community of 112,300 residents increased in size by 142%. As the second fastest growing city in Texas and the 15th fastest in the nation, Pearland is a thriving community with a diverse young workforce. 50% of the population is made up of Latino, African American, and Asian ethnic groups with the average resident age at 33 years old. To successfully advance Pearland, we have to continue to manage our growth quality of life, and small town atmosphere while working on street and traffic needs and transportation solutions for the city. It's a tough job building a city. At the end of the day, our goal while working to build a city is to ensure that residents are proud to live in Pearland. I'm a little late, but I've been building a city. And obviously, I've had a little help. Our city has been a wonderful, wonderful group of people that have come together in partnership, and we're building a city together. So today's story is not just my story. It's our story. And I think that's the important thing that we have to do today is talk about what really happened in 2014? That was a signature date. You know, when uh, you look at Pearland, if we don't build a city that people want to be a part of, they're going to go look somewhere else to find it. So our job is to make certain that our city is a very special one. So let's take a trip through 2014 and see what we're doing. Take a look at our city's size. Our location, our population growth, elected officials and staff who manage the city. Who are these people? This chart I think is very important. See where Pearland is? Off to your left is Sugarland, Missouri City. Off to the right, Pasadena, Deer Park, and uh, some other cities over in that area. Houston in the middle is all green. I think that we have found a great location 
for a city. It's a good place to be. If you're talking about Perlin, you have to say, how big is it? Where is it? We're in three counties, primarily in Missouri County, but we're also in Fort Bend and Harris counties. And you can see now the, the yellow up there is the incorporated part of our city. We have 69 square miles in our city. 44 of those are inside of our city limits, which means that they can vote for me. If, <laughs> if they're not inside that city limits, then we're going to plan to operate. But we have about 25 square miles outside of our city that is not developed by the city. Population growth, starting way back in 1960, we didn't have very many people. When I moved here in 1965, we had 4,000. And we knew each other. I saw them three or four times a day, so I knew everybody. Today, when I go out, I see people, I recognize their face, I have no idea who they are. <laughs> but that's because we've become a city of large population now. We look like we're 112,000 this year. And if you look at uh, Silver Lake and the Lakes of Savannah, which are part of Paraland, we have 137,000 people here. We're in the process of annexing Silver Lake. And when we annex them, and we get to be something like 137,000 people then, we'll be a lot more people then. Because everybody comes in now, we'll add to our population base. Who are the guys that sort of make the rules? They were sitting over at the table with me, and uh, I noticed that my dessert disappeared real fast. <laughs> but, you know, you have to work together as a, as a group, and uh, I'll get an email, I'll eat their dessert later. But I'd like for my council to stand up. All my city council, would you guys stand up so we can take a shot at you? Okay, okay. <laughs> most of them, every one of them works for a living. I mean, most of them are outside the city limits working for a living. For instance, Scott Sherman's got a case downtown as an attorney, and he couldn't make it today. So I'm gonna save my leftover lunch and make it available to them later. Next slide. Who are the guys that we hire only as our city employees? Now, we have about 600 city employees, but they all don't work, none of them work for the city council. They all work for Clay Pearson, who is our city manager. Our city attorney, he, I don't know whether you know it or not, but uh, Darren graduated from high school in Pearland. He's now a city attorney. And uh, our Judge Forney is our municipal court judge. These are the people that we hire, we evaluate, and we make a uh, decision on compensation. Now, when you look at Clay Pearson, he came down from Michigan. And uh, when he came down, we decided that, uh, you know, if you take a pair out of Pearland and a new son of Pearland, put them together, and that's Pearson. And that's pretty Pearson, Pearlite for, a guy coming down, and you know, he's you not know, a Texan, and he can begin to talk like one. Thank goodness. So we're working on it. We also have some, some senior staff changes. Uh, John Branson is our new deputy city manager. Uh, Trent Epperson was our project manager for a while, but now he's an assistant city manager. That, he, worked his way up and he has demonstrated good qualities for that. And of course, uh, Matt, Matt Buchanan, he was the president of the Paraland Economic Development Corporation. And if we felt like that the, the job that uh, uh, community services was doing, uh, development services was, were doing code enforcement and uh, planning and sorts, it fit in with him. So we folded all that under Matt. And uh, it's, it's working pretty well for us so far. When you go through Pearland, you say, gee whiz, there's a lot of happening in this little town. Uh, I wonder if we could play a little Did You Know? Let me do that. Did you know that Pearland occupies 4.3% of the city's footprint? We're not very big. Did you know that we have 35% of the population in the city, in, the, in Missouri County? Did you know that uh, we also have 
31% of the tax base in Missouri County, the certified tax base value. I think that's pretty impressive for a little small town, north part of the county, trying to make our way. And with that in place, one of the things we have is always a mayor pro tem. Every year we change that person out and move somebody else in. We've got two of these guys. These are two of, uh, a couple of former mayor pro tems that have gone on to state and at federal leadership. Ed Thompson, he's uh, mayor pro tem in 2011. He's now state rep, District 29. Randy Weber was pro tem in 1992. He's now a U.S. Congressman, District 14. I think that's pretty neat. These are a couple of Paraland guys that used to sit up there with us, and now we say yes sir to them. And I think it's great. Also, when you look at uh, other things that happened in Paraland, did you know that uh, Allison's 100 Best said that number three in the, in the Houston area is Killen's Barbecue? I can smell that one from a distance. The other one is Killen's Steakhouse, number 22. If you haven't eaten at these two places, you ought to try it out. It's great. Did you know that we had the largest girls volleyball tournament in the nation for the second time in the world? And uh, it, that's one we put up every year. John Turner is a volleyball coach. And he started this idea. And we're, we're noticing that there are a lot of coaches coaching basketball around the nation are visiting Paraland during that tournament. And I can see why. The, the girls volleyball national championship type. Little League, you know, when you, when you think about the kids that we have in Paraland, our teams played together a little bit, and we chose one of them that went to Little League All-Star, Little League World Series. This was the second trip of one of our teams. The one that went up here this year, which was not this year, but last year, last summer, they went up. They didn't quite make it all the way up. And they were defeated by Chicago's Jackie Robinson West. I understand who lost their title because they were recruiting people from outside their district. And they got a couple of college players probably working with them. <laughs> but they came in, Paraland came in as one of the, as the fourth best team in America and the seventh best team in the, in, the, in the world. And I don't think that's too shabby. Nope. Not at all. Why don't we play a little Did You Know? How many Paraland fire stations are savoring in our city? See if what you've been picking up. Oh, we've got six of them. Okay. How many state historical markers in Paraland? How about four? How many Paraland teams gone to the Little League World Series? If you missed two, you weren't paying attention to the previous slide. <laughs> How many Missouri County commissioners serving in our city? Three of them. Do you know that? You only have five in the county. How many citizens serve on the city council? There's six of us. Five council and one mayor. How many citizens elected to the Texas House of Representatives in Austin? We've had three of them. That's not bad. How many have been elected as a U.S. congressman? We've had one. I think that is kind of speaks very highly of Paraland becoming not only a regional, but a national power. And that's some good progress that we've made over the years. Let's talk about financial status. You know, when you, when you, when you run an organization like Paraland, you have to decide what is the fiscal health of the organization. And to do that, you look at the bonds. And you guys that sell bonds or work in the banks, you know, what these numbers, what these double A's and uh, double A minuses and so forth mean. I think we're, our fiscal health is in pretty good shape. And why is it in pretty good shape? Let's look at our tax history. Back in 1896, practically almost, it's, but in eight, uh, 1989, we had uh, almost 83 cents as a tax rate. And then, so we went on down to 2004, dropped down to 60, almost 70%. It's up to 70.1% uh, 70 today, which is not too bad for a city that is the second fastest growing in the state of Texas and the 15th fastest growing in the nation. Those numbers didn't come from our chamber, and they would support it 
but it came from our census department. They made that decision. So with a fast growing city, you're gonna to have to have a lot more taxable dollars to make sure that you provide the service that you have to provide. Our major tax sources are from two of sources, our sales tax and our property tax. And when you look at the sales tax, I think that's something that you do when you go out and buy something. If you own a piece of property, that's where it comes from. About 79% of our Paralympics property taxable value is from residential uses. That's a little, makes you a little nervous because we need to make sure that we have other tax base in the city that can help us support the future development that we need. So we're working hard on that aspect of it. These are the largest 10, 10 largest uh, taxpayers in Paraland. Weatherford at the top, Paraland Town Center, Global Pipe Survey, and others. And I think these guys are pretty wonderful. They, they represent about almost 6% of our tax base. And then when you look at the area cities, that, uh, when you compare us to other cities around the area, these are kind of peer cities, if you would. We're not the lowest, but we're not the highest. But all of those in there, we're the fastest growing. And we're the ones that are having to put in an awful lot of capital improvements that were not there when we population grew in that area. And a lot of these other cities, they improved the practice in the area that they already developed. So I think we're, doing, we're positioned pretty well as a city from that perspective. Sales tax, 26%. That's not too bad. And I think a lot of that is because of our retail markets and our retail uh, uh, centers in town that have represented something that makes you want to go out and buy. And, and uh, when you get a little nervous and lonesome, go out and buy something, which would you? Managing our finance, we do have strong policies and controls. We do have goals that we've established before we, uh, before we get to the tax uh, decision-making time in our city. And uh, we also have something that I think is very important. We have the mayor, two council members, city manager, and the director of finance serving on the audit committee. We look at all the financial data, work with our auditors, and make certain that we keep a close eye on our finances. If you keep your finances in order, your city will run fine. And that's an extremely important point. These are the couple of guys that work in the uh, the office, the finance office with uh, Claire Bogart. And uh, if you have an organization that has 38 consecutive years of excellent financial reporting and 28 years of distinguished budget presentation, you know these guys are looking at us from the, that's the Government Finance Officer Association and they look at these organizations in all the cities <clears throat> and shake their finger at those that are having problems. They didn't shake a finger at these items, so I think that's a plus for us. The, one of the other things I think is important, when, when you talk about financing, you, you, you like to have visibility. You like to know the things are being watched and being taken care of. And the Comptroller's Office each year looks at the, the transparency of your financial operation. And they have promoted us from the silver to the platinum for entities that go above and beyond. And I think that's something that all of you should have a feeling of comfort that your city has good transparency in our fiscal dollars. We may not have all the dollars we need to do the capital improvements and things we need to do in the city, but at least it's there where you can find it and you can see where we're putting it. Economic development. This is something that uh, we talked about a while ago, about 79% uh, of our tax base is residential. This is where we're going to have to make up that difference so that we can get more taxable, high value taxable base in there. Now, what we did was we, we took the development services and uh, folded that in with the PE, uh, Economic Development uh, Board of Directors under Matt, and uh, he's, he's formed those together. Uh, they have a, uh, the PEDC has a 2020 uh, strategic plan that addresses our specific challenges and the various opportunities that we can take to improve our economic development in Pearland. It's about a, a year and a half old, but uh, it's making some good progress. Their planning division, of course, received 
their eighth year in a row that they received a certificate of achievement. And, uh, and it's kind of interesting because we've got some of the planning director people there, but you know, all of the council got out there to get the picture in this paper. I want to make sure that uh, when they talk about the certificate of achievement for planning, all of us were there because we depend on these type of uh, uh, groups. And my understanding is that uh, Lada Cristinero is in India today for a special family event. So I can't uh, ask her to stand up or anything, but she has done a good leadership job in that uh, area. Let's talk about some of the things that are happening in parallel. You know, it's amazing. Uh, I, I told uh, one, of the, one of the individuals here today, I can't remember who it was, when I put together this, this, this uh, presentation, I was kind of like uh, Alfred Hitchcock when, uh, when Cecil B. DeMille's approached him and says, I love that movie you did. And I said, the material's great. And Hitchcock said, you ought to see what was on the cutting floor. <laughs> and that's exactly where my dilemma was. How do I tell everything that should be told in about an hour? And I've already used up most of it. HEB decided they want to put a second one on Paralyzed East Side, which they did. It's a great group of people that uh, have put together a great organization. And they also bought enough land so they've got some other pads there. They've got some retail pads, they've got some beds, and a Bank of America is under construction out in front. So apparently they feel like there's making, going to be a lot of money exchanging hands out there. So that's good. Right next to it, of course, is the center of Pearland Parkway. It's kind of interesting. The Houston Chronicle said they're, they're top 100 they always put out each year. They said that's the big, the center is the biggest retail project to break down in Houston area in 2014. I didn't know that. And uh, I thought that was quite impressive. So when I drove over there, it's still under construction. I don't know how big that place is really going to be. But that's a good start for us. Merit Medical Systems. Merit Medical is a very interesting organization. They, they manufacture and distribute a variety of disposable internal and diagnostic medical devices around the world. And they have just had, the, uh, back in October, they, we did the grand opening and the reception and cut the ribbon on that. And uh, they also have been certified, had international certification since they sell internationally, which meant that they, their production can go gung-ho now. But it's a Beautiful organization, and uh, hadn't been up for about uh, almost under, before they even opened. Keep Her Land Beautiful gave them a yard of the month recognition for the landscaping. Houston Methodist Emergency Care Center. Now, Methodist Hospital has not been down in this area looking around too closely, but uh, Dr. Boom and I had the opportunity of visiting when he came down to cut the ribbon on this facility out on West 518, uh, right across from uh, town center. And we visited and I asked him, if, uh, I said, you know, this is a beautiful operation. And I said, Dr. Boom, with you doing this and putting your first venture, major venture into Pearland, we are now boom town. And he said, I wish you'd tell my wife that. <laughs> But uh, they, they, it is, and they, they are looking at a couple of other areas of making medical uh, adventure into Pearland, and uh, that's a, that would be the third major hospital area, if we could put a hospital here, so. MHI Compressor, that's a Japanese-based company. They are putting in a, their facility on Kirby Drive. It's gonna be a monster-sized facility. Uh, it's their first venture, American venture, for the compressor division. And I think it's nice when they, when they were doing the groundbreaking, I told the, uh, the developers, I said, now the one thing I insist that you do is put a nice Japanese garden here so that we can have something, some quality gardening here that for us to drive by and just say, wow. And he said they'd probably try to do that. Modern Green, Ivy District, that's a Chinese-based developer that based in Hong Kong, uh, uh, on the Hong Kong market. They're putting in a real nice facility there. Uh, it uh, hasn't progressed past the approval of, of the zoning at this point, but I thought it's worthy of us looking at that as something come down the way. Mixed-use pedestrian-oriented project, and uh, it's on 
288 was where the water lights used to be at one time. And if we can put that in place, I think it would be a show, show place opportunity for us in Pearland to highlight the quality of life that we've got going and working right now. And Hospital Corporation of America, we did the groundbreaking and then we did the ribbon cutting just recently. And I tell you, it, um, it's, it's fabulous. Uh, they were going to do it before Christmas, but the, they were, weren't quite ready to finish out all of the interior for us to come in and look at it and make sure it looked pretty good. And we did that. But you know, that's uh, it's on 48 acres, and it sits right behind the medical plaza that's been there for about three or four years. That is a fabulous hospital. I was had the chance, it was over in that area yesterday, day before yesterday, and I did walk through it again on a tour, another tour. It's amazing what they have in place there. It's uh, impressive. We need more of this type of facility in Pearland, and we're going to get it. Did you know that we have close to 9,000 of our citizens work at the Texas Medical Center? And they, we are, as a result of that, plus the development of medical facilities in Pearland, we're becoming a medical-oriented community at this point. Convenient Care Center opened last, uh, last uh, March. And that was a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to go through that particular facility of Memorial Hermann. They already had a professional building in place, but this joined that for a future development, which is the next one, which is the Memorial Hermann Medical Complex, which will be adding, it under, it's under construction, now you can see the construction visibly there. It's gonna be a 111,000 square foot office building and their large uh, hospital. And uh, when they're finished, though, that's going to be a large, large medical complex. And that's uh, quite impressive to have those two major hospitals, HCA and Momo Herman, in, in, in our community. Dover Energy. Dover's an interesting organization. They're, they're ranked 307 on the Fortune 500 companies list. And I think that's kind of interesting that they are, and um, they have built that building, and what they have done is to look around, and there were four different companies uh, in regional and, and cities around the area. They brought them all in, and all four companies are gonna be domiciled in this one uh, <coughs> facility. And with the idea that it'll be more efficient of operation and, uh, and, uh, and, and probably less expensive to operate. Small businesses in Pearland. Chamber of Commerce has always done such a superb job on doing the small businesses and uh, working with them. And we, this will be the second group that has gone to national U.S. Chamber of Commerce to get a 24 uh, to a Blue Ribbon Small Business Award. And both of these, uh, both Killen Pest Control and uh, ADDI Printing, have those. They've got their sign on the front of the building when you drive by you can see hey look at me I have a US Chamber of Commerce blue ribbon quality of life is something that we have to depend on as a city there's a company called nerd wallet they review all of the cities over 25,000 and there are 111 cities in Texas that they do review over of the ones that they're working on to determine which city is the best one for young families to live in. They have, uh, when they finish their uh, project of looking at this, they look at school ratings, home values, income growth, so forth. And parallel with rank number nine. I think that's not too shabby either. Dr. Staples, you saw him up here just a few minutes ago. He's been a great partner. That's a great partnership with us. If you haven't been out to the campus, you need to go out to our campus. Our campus is a place that is, is going to grow a little bit. As a matter of fact, uh, the University of Houston Clear Lake will be going to the legislature this year to request a health science building for the Pearland campus because they, we have started our newest degree, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, which is, which is sort of a cooperative effort with the Alvin Community College and San Jacinto Junior College, with the idea that, uh, you know, if we can get those students in, in those colleges in the nursing pro program 
and run them back through our Pearland campus and get their uh, bachelor's degree, that would be great because we're going to need these people with the development we're taking place in Pearland. And uh, it's also open to any other registered nurse we'd like to go through the BS program. Dr. Albrecht, would you please stand up? Where are you? That's all while ago. There she is back over there. She's the new president. She's the new president of Alvin Community College. And I've had a chance to visit with her, and uh, she's fabulous. She has this vision of making that an exceptionally uh, oriented campus for education. And uh, one of the things that uh, Alvin Community College does, they partner with our Turner College and Career High School that we'll mention just in a few minutes and uh, making sure they get uh, associate degrees and working workforce training and other support, educational support activities. It's a good partnership that we've got working there and a brand new president coming in. So you just met her. Thank you for being here. Please come back more often. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you want to be part of her uh, investigative committee, you're welcome to join her on that. Pearland High School, Dr. John K. John, where are you? Stick your hand up on him. You know, maybe, maybe you can stand up so we can see. This, this guy here has done a fabulous job. They, this organization, which is a school education ranking service, said that Pearland was the second best school district in the Houston area and the 17th best in Texas of the 1,000 school districts that we have in the state. The campuses were achieved what he said were educational uh, top rating of, of uh, this a fancy name, it says met standards in every test, every grade, and every subject. And they've done some fabulous work on linking all of their computers together. And uh, that school has done some work to find it. Part of uh, uh, Pearland Independent School District, of course, is the Turner College and Career Center. The whole idea was that they could take some students, take them over and give them an accelerated process of learning college degrees and workforce certification. Under her tutelage, uh, college credits have increased by 33%, and I think that's, that's very commendable. Over 200 students passed their professional certification, and when they do that, they can go out and work in the workforce and be a part of the workforce workforce and, and, and make a living while, they, while they're still in school, I guess. I'm not sure about that aspect of it. But the school, college has worked very closely with the local businesses, and uh, I think that has been a partnership that's worked very well. Alvin Independent School District. Buck Grish, 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 Grish. Is he here today? I didn't know whether he had a chance to make it or not. There he is. Back. Would you please stand up so we can see the new president <laughs> the new superintendent of the Alvin Independent School District. Buck, I tell you, thank you for being here, and, and uh, we, I haven't, we haven't had a chance to get together very much so far. You've been a busy man, trying to break in and find out where the water fountain is and everything. And uh, I've been trying to put this thing together so to say hi to duty to you today. So thank you so much. You know, Alvin Independent School District is, uh, uh, has 50, 251 square miles. That's a monster side school district. And uh, it has a lot of schools. It has 15 elementary, five junior high, and two uh, uh, high schools in, in place at the present time. But in Pearland, out west of Pearland, we have uh, in, you know, everything west of 518, uh, of 30, uh, excuse me, everything west of 288 is in the Alvin School District. Everything on the east side of 288 is in the Pearland Independent School District. So uh, there are guys either way we talk. They're all citizens of Pearland. But in, in, in the coverage of that, uh, we've got a, a great school district over there, and we've got some great opportunities. And what we're doing for Alvin School District is provide our side of town on the west side of 288 for the new high school that's right across from Dillard's. And I always thought that's a great opportunity. Wives, mothers come pick the kids up. There's a hot, hot sale in Dillard's. I mean, the kids may be hanging around there for a while. Well, everybody go shopping, I hope. And uh, it's, it's their third high school. And it does provide a place for our Pearland 
citizens on the west side to go to the local school on the west side instead of going to Alvin High School. Municipal Court, we're on one of only 224 cities, municipal courts in Texas that have some of the membership going through certification classes. And uh, Jennifer has done a good job in encouraging that and the list of the names are listed below there. And what that does, it means that the quality of our court facility is pretty good. When you have those certifications, because it's, it's, they're not easy, they're, they're selective and true. Public safety, when you talk about public safety, I'm, I'm concerned uh, when, when people say, I'm, I feel a little uncomfortable sometimes driving on the street. And, uh, but you know, the Chief Doyle, and, and this is not only Chief Doyle graduated from high school in Pearland. He's homegrown, done a super job, and uh, his assistant is Johnny Spires, and Chief's sitting back over there a while ago. And he has 222 employees. The 155 were sworn police officers, and 94 of those are on the street right now. One of our concerns is that we're still understaffed, and we're in the process of upgrading the staffing in the police department. Getting the type of people that we want on our police department is a little more difficult than just going out and hiring people. So they've gone through a process of trying to make certain that the people we bring in are those that you, you wouldn't mind taking home to your, show to your mother and uh, say, this is a great guy. They've also taken their bicycle program, which is sort of interesting. They, they said that the bicycle program, they can get into tight places very quietly and sneak up on people that shouldn't be doing what they're doing. <laughs> and also, Federal Bureau of Investigation, each year the FBI looks at all cities over 100,000 population in America and look at their crime rate and they decide who are the safest cities around. They've listed us in the top 50 safest cities this past year. Everybody behave yourself when you go home tonight. <laughs> Make sure you do it. Fire Marshal, sitting right here, Roland Garcia. He does a lot of things. He does uh, health, code enforcement and so forth. But he's the guy, uh, by, by state law, I'm the emergency manager. I can call the governor and say, we need some help around here. But being a smart mayor, I've, I'll make sure that we've got the right guy in there, so I'll put Roland Garcia as our emergency management coordinator. And he's done a super job in, uh, in uh, how many now, two or three hurricanes? Three we've been it's three hurricanes. And uh, he's the guy that uh, when, he, when he takes over a hurricane, we I turn him over to him, we all report to him and work it out. And he's done a superb job, and I appreciate what he does. Fire department. Roland, that's a good picture of Roland there. And uh, some of the guys off to the right there have been receiving the, the award of Achievement of Excellence. And uh, it's for the third time. And that's, uh, if, you, if your house catches on fire, you've got a comfort, comfort level here because we've got a, a good bunch of guys. And I want to show you just a couple of slides later. The, the new fire stations that we're putting in. I want you to look at this slide. Tony Carbone and the fire chief and I have loaded our shovel and we're moving that pile over. Our city managers are taking a photo op. <laughs> <laughs> but we did, we, we finally moved that sand over and that's station number two. It used to be on McLean Road uh, right over by the theater, if you know where it is, on 518 West. It's, uh, we're moving in here because the, the population growth has changed over the years, and we have to make sure we put it to where the population growth is going to be today and in the future. So we, we move, we'll remove the other fire station at some point. This is fire station three down on the Oster Road down at 518 on the east side of town. That replaces old fire station three. When we came here, when I came here in 1965, 
we had, number one was at the, at the uh, barn, which is on Orange Street in Old Alvin. Fire station number two was out off McLean Road. There's a water tower out there. And fire station three was down on 518 West, uh, East, down toward where Broadway and almost down to Dixie Farm Road. We had those in place. That was the population base. You, you, you look at the station and uh, you, 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 tr you have what you call a service area. You can go to it in three minutes. So you draw that three minutes and draw a circle. And obviously, the old station three, uh, the, the, it was way off on the side of the circle. We need to move the station where it was the center of the circle. So that's what we've done with these two stations here. And we've done a good job, and I'm really impressed with the quality of the That was the one I was working on there, in case you remember that. It's, I think I had to go back and rework it a little, maybe. Major transportation projects, 288 toll road. You know, we've been wondering how we're going to handle all this transportation that we're generating in Pearland. And I'm not so concerned about the population in Pearland as, as our judge is, going to, is worried about all the population south of Pearland is building up along 288 in, in the Manville and down over Collin area. So, and, and, and probably, you probably did not know this, but uh, we're members of the Transportation Policy Council. And uh, he was selected by the city of Houston to represent them on the reconstruction of the 288 corridor going into the Houston area. And is also the responsible person on the Missouri County side. So we've got a guy here that uh, is uh, working the issue and it gives me a sense of comfort when we have quality people like him in place and uh, in that. So the design from 58 North to Clear Creek is, uh, is under construction, uh, under design. We're working on that. It's not something that's easy to do with a, you know, we're putting, in case you don't know it, when you drive 288, it's a green piece of property in the, between the two lanes, the, the northbound lane and the southbound lane, there's a big bunch of green out there that sometimes they mow. <coughs> that's, where the, that's where the toll road is going in. And that toll road <coughs> is going to be, hopefully started in 2016, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right, Judge? Put, uh, he, he did a, crossed his fingers on that, but, but I think it's, un, it's, under, it's underway and it's under good management. The, uh, the one in Harris County, uh, they're looking at starting part of that process in 2016. That'll pick it up at about the, about the uh, beltway and carry it all the way down into town to connect to 59. Inside the city limits now, we're working, uh, the, we're taking bids on the Card Road, Bailey Road, Fight Road, <clears throat> and Max Road. And I think if we can, if we can get those on the way and get the bid process out of the way, we've got it designed pretty well. We can, we can at least start doing some major capital improvements on our roads in Pearland. One of the things we recognize, we've got so many hospi uh, hospitals in town that we looked around and said, hey, we've got a bunch of hotels too. Hotels provide what they call hot tax. It's a occupation tax for people. When you sign in, you know you get charged an occupation and a hotel occupation tax. And they said, we need a convention visitor bureau. So we were able to get a quality person. Kim came, came down to us. Uh, she's a professional in this area. <clears throat> and over the about just a little more than a year, I think it is, Kim, I think, I believe it's about a year of operation. They've had put out 25,000 maps, and, and uh, I'm not into Facebook and stuff like that, but she got a bunch of likes, apparently. <laughs> I, I, I guess that's good, <laughs> I hope. And uh, they've, they've had several partnerships that have been very productive. They've worked with the Crawdad Festival, uh, some of the other, other type of things like uh, arts and crafts and uh, the, the baseball and volleyball tournaments we have in Pearland, they, they've become partnerships with them as well. So it's something that uh, I think is very good. Our parks and recreation, we um, are very fortunate that Michelle has done a great job 
Uh, I looked at her, last, this time last year, I think she was blonde. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, she has done a superb job of uh, putting together a parks department and personnel that have made this a, a parks, a, we haven't finished all the parks we're gonna put in, but uh, they've had over 60,000 participants attend, attend things like Celebration of, uh, the Celebration of Freedom is a 4th of July event. And if you didn't make water, uh, uh, Winterfest, if you did not make Winterfest, you missed something. It was fabulous. I, I was very much impressed. They've done something, I think, very special. They've had 700 people as a project that they've undertaken to uh, do an underwater robotics program. And uh, reaching out like that, I think, is, is very profitable to us and, from a technology standpoint. And they've also made sure that they've picked up all of the recyclables I can at these events. And they've also had a lot of volunteer hours, uh, 2,223 hours, people volunteering for the Parks Department. I think that's great. That's a good reflection on our city. Keep Pearland beautiful. Now this is an organization that's really, really fabulous. They have received more recognition and awards from Keep Pearland, uh, for, for Keep Texas Beautiful and Keep America Beautiful over the years. And also, they have expanded something I think is very important. They've expanded their educational curriculum and environmental programs to 24 more new teachers in the Pearland area, and also out to the Alvin Independent School District schools so that they could be part of the Kippers program and the other type of programs we have in our city. The thing I think I'm very proud of is that uh, they have received the Governor's Community Achievement Award six times. You say, well, that doesn't sound like much, but you can only receive it about once every five years. Once you receive it, you gotta sit out <laughs> because we kept winning it every time we were blowing everybody out. And if you go into City Hall or the community center, you'll see one of those on the wall. It's a, it's a nice, good-sized plaque. It's, uh, it, I fixed it to the wall after so you can get a chance to look at it. We are a green community. We received recognition. We were one of 28 cities that have been, received the Scenic City certification. That's impressive. We're one of 72 Texas cities to receive the Tree City USA. We are a bird sanctuary. And incidentally, we lost our uh, ball, ball Bald, point, uh, bald headed eagle, I understand he was injured and uh, he did pass away this past, past summer. Uh, but they tried to work and resuscitate him and bring him up. We went up, uh, uh, designated as uh, a green city policy by our city council. All of our future buildings will be under green policy. And we also have a very strong recycling program. And uh, that has been something that uh, the uh, our guys in, uh, in, in the green community area have been looking forward to increasing as much as possible. Several years ago, <clears throat> as the West Side grew, there were a lot of people that wanted to go to the library, and the only library we had was one across from City Hall, and they, <clears throat> they felt that that was a rather a long drive to go from west side of town uh, into uh, one on the east side. Well, the uh, councils responded to that, and we had a couple of guys, uh, Stacy Adams, I think Stacy's here today. Uh, Stacy, thank you, uh, appreciate the work that you've done on that to you, and uh, Scott Sherman on the city council, working with the Friends of Scouting on the west side, <coughs> we were able to put in a library facility right behind HEB on the west side of town. And the problem was, when we did that, it became the second best used library in the, in the county. And, uh, and, and the judge, judge thanked us for that. <laughs> and so we said, hey, we gotta do something about that. So we, we, we the council put the money out to do a, a, about a 4,000 plus expansion. And this is what it looks like, what it does. It uh, just made the thing much bigger and open wider and it has places for com uh, computer uh, stands, uh, meeting, small meeting areas and things that we didn't have before. It's a beautiful library if you're out west of town, it's on Benny Center Drive, right behind HEB, 
on the west side of town. Take, drive in it, just get out and go in and look around a little bit. You'll be amazed at what's going on there. And uh, community, communications department, of course you saw uh, Sparkle there a while ago, and Debbie's back here punching up the screens for me. They've done a superb job. Uh, Mike is over here taking pictures on the side somewhere. But we, uh, we've been able to, uh, with, that, with that new organization that we put in place, uh, we've been awarded 10 local, state, and national awards in, in, in 14, and have garnered more than 6,400 Facebook fans. Is that pretty good? Six, I'm not sure about that. And uh, more, I, some of you say, I don't even know the, what they are. It's 35,600 35, YouTube video views. Uh, this is great. They begin uh, streaming the, the planning and zoning. We do the, we do the city council now. And uh, if you go on Comcast 16 or UVerse Channel 99, you can, you can catch our uh, recordings of all of the council meetings, the plan, now the planning and zoning meetings, some of the other park board meetings and others that she's doing. We get to a point where you got to let you guys go back to work, so maybe it's time for us to do a little wrap up. I've always thought that when, uh, when, I, when I came out here and looked at this facility and uh, was able to get the nod for us to use it, I just want to warn you all, that, uh, be sure to watch your language and while you're in here, that uh, one of the challenges of growth that we have is we're the 30, we, we were the 36th largest, but we're now the 35th largest city in the state of Texas, and the third fastest growing city, and the third fastest by popula uh, largest by population in the Gulf Coast area. And you know, we're getting the challenges and, and uh, problems that other large cities that have grown have experienced. And how we respond to those challenges will make a big difference in how Paraland will develop over the coming years. And I think how we do that is very, very important. This presentation is not my presentation. It is your presentation. It's your city as well as mine. I'm talking about what you have accomplished and what we have accomplished as partners. And let's talk about a few things that we probably need to look at together as we go forward. The partners that we have, I think, are very important. The Chamber has been wonderful. Our Alvin and Paraland School Districts, University of Houston Clear Lake, with Dr. Staples has been helping us on that. Our local, state, elect, and uh, national elected officials, our civic and community organization, and many, many more people who have worked together in partnership with us to make something very special out of what we have, a place called Paraland. Quality of growth. If you look at the progress we made in Pearland, and I'm looking back at each one of the divisions that we just went through, Pearland has, uh, has, has developed as a quality uh, city and has earned recognition of a cosmopolitan suburb. Pearland is a, has a fiscal status that is strong and in fiscal polities are, are well, well grounded with good fiscal management. We're working toward attracting businesses and development that will add to our tax base. And we're recognized as a city that provides quality of life, first class education, recreation, and leisure, and above all, a small town atmosphere. If you look at a things to do list, and uh, I think we all need to, uh, in our, even in our personal life, we need to do that. We need to make sure that we continue to manage our growth, quality of life, and our small town atmosphere, because that's what grabs people when they come in. And we need to diversify our tax base with high value development because 79% of it is residential and uh, we need more high value development in, in industrial and retail as we go into the future. We need to plan for museums, art, entertainment, and nightlife activities and facilities because those are expected of a destination city. And that's what we keep saying that we are. And we make, need to make certain that we follow up on that. And we're working on that as we speak. And we need to continue working on our streets and traffic needs and multiple transportation solutions for Paraland. There are so many because we are, you remember those first slides we looked at? The, the huge 79 square miles, 
69 square miles, 44 Minnesota, seven. those are pretty good sized footprints that we've got to work with and make sure they all tie in to the regional uh, transportation arterial network. My job, of course, I have one too. My job is to make sure that at the end of the day, I'm, each one of you go home and say, I'm glad I, sure glad I live in Paralyn. You can pick up this uh, on the website if you'd like. I'm not sure what all those are up there, but uh, one of those has it. <laughs> <coughs> Somewhere in there is a, is a copy of this one. Thank you for the opportunity to be your servant. <laughs> You have been a wonderful audience today. Thank you for giving me a chance. I, I wanted to get here and find out what, what y'all have been doing to the city. We did this together. This, I just, I'm just the storyteller and uh, telling you what we all did as a collective partnership. So this is our city. This was our story. And thank you all for being here and letting me have a chance to be a part of this process. Thank you so much.